Hi, it's Karen with Black Swan Journals. And today I'm sharing with you how I dye my journal pages for my junk journal when I want bright colors and not um, just the normal coffee dyeing or avocado dyeing or um, I haven't tried red cabbage dyeing. I, I, I'd like to try that, but anyhow, um, here I'm going to share with you brown ink, blue, green, and pink ink. Right here I'm showing you examples of the brown ink. And also I put coarse sea salt in these pages and I'll show you that as well. I did it to these here, the brown, and I also did it to the blue, but not to the green and not to the pink just so you could see the variation that the salt gives and the more smooth texture that, uh, or not texture actually, that the pink and the green give. So here there's lots of different variations that can happen with the salt. So we're just getting a, we're getting an after shot here. We're getting what, what you get, the result. And as soon as I'm done showing you the result, we're gonna start from scratch and I'll show you the whole thing and how to do this. It's really quick, it's really fast. You can do so many so quickly. And um, I know a lot of people do it with like a jelly plate. And I mean, that's super fun too. Um, but this is just another way and it's really fast and I mean, I can do like, I don't know, um, maybe a hundred pages in like <clears throat> less than an hour. And if you don't care about lines and wrinkles, that's, I, that's how I guess I do them that quickly because I let them stack up and stay that way. I don't care about the ripples and lines and wrinkles. Um, if you wanted something super smooth, yeah, you'd have to lay them out on something smooth one at a time until they're dry and it would take a long time to, to get papers that way. But if you're not fussy and you let go, you can actually get some really cool results that way. Here, here I'm showing you the examples of the blue that we're going to dye. All of these examples are actually the product of what we're going to dye together in a few minutes on camera. So this one had the salt, just like the brown. I'm showing you here the journal pages and also I was showing you I used some of the papers to actually make uh, a little page to make a pocket with and journal on. And under here, after I removed these things, I made a little flip. <clears throat> and here's another one of the blue papers with the salt. And here's the other side. So that's how the blue papers come out that we do together. And here's an example of one of the green papers that we're going to do together. And I used one of the dried pages to make this uh, pocket here. And I glued it down and then made those journaling cards and put them inside the green pocket. So that's without salt. The green and the pink did not have the salt. And here's one more example of the use of the blue paper with the salt. Um, actually, this was a portion of an envelope that we're gonna dye together too with, when we do the blue. And what I did is I ripped off the flap of the envelope and then ripped that and created a little mountain hill scene for that owl journaling card. And that was just another use of the paper and you got to see how it came out. So here are some other um, papers of the end result of the dyeing that we're about to do in a minute. This is the green, the green envelope. This is how that came out. This had no salt. 
here's that portion of the blue envelope I was just talking about where I ripped off the flap and made the hills for the owl. That's how the blue came out and that did have salt. It created some neat um, bumpy textures. So here is a green paper, no salt. So depending on the amount of ink to water ratio, you can get really saturated and bright colors. Or if you do a lot of water and less ink, you can get some very muted, well not muted, but some very dreamy pastel colors. So you can kind of control the color of the blue, of the green, of the pink, of the brown, and etc. They come in other colors too. This one's also green, no salt. And the rest of these here are examples of all the pink ones we're about to do together. And the pink also did not have salt. Here's the envelope. So <clears throat> I share with you the amount of ink to water ratio I do for each one. I show you how I brush it on, what I use for a brush, and um, I show you what I put it in my pan. And you can see here like I, how I'm getting lines and creases. That's because I just let them stack up in the pan, the papers um, wet on top of each other. So if you wanted to say do like, you know, 50, 50 zero, um, blue papers at once, then you can do that uh, real quickly. And it just takes a long time for them to dry when they're stacked up like that. But if it's um, in a decent climate where you are outside, you can put them outside to dry. Uh, it takes a lot less time. Um, just put them somewhere where they won't blow away. Um, but also if you live in a warmer, in a colder climate like me and, and I have a wood stove, I put it near my wood stove and it dries really quickly. So here we're doing the pink and the ink is called Bombay. <clears throat> and I put a full entire dropper. So I squeeze up the dropper in while it's in the ink bottle and I fill up the dropper completely with the pink ink and then I squeeze it into that little tiny custard dish of water that was filled you could see where it was filled to so what I do is I just um take a little piece of paper off to the side when I first started out and I just kind of played around with my water to ink ratio and if I you know I, I increased the ink if I wanted more brighter color and if it was too bright and I felt like it was garish or something you know for what I was doing then I would just use way less ink and a lot of water and get some very toned down papers so I also wanted to talk about the paper that I'm using here. And all I'm using is regular copy paper. I just got it on Amazon. Um, it was probably like HP brand. Um, it wasn't laser paper. It was like regular inkjet printer, you know, the normal printers most people have, um, that type. And just, uh, you know, <clears throat> I think although I did get a little bit of a thicker weight, um, and I live in the States, so the way it's, it says on mine is it's by the pounds, and I think it was a 32 pound, not the typical like 24 pound that you would get for cheapo copy paper. So, um, yeah, I splurged a little because, um, I don't know. I just wanted my pages to be a little bit thicker. And also, it rips less so when you have a heavier weight paper when you're adding so much water. So yeah, I wanted to mention you certainly can use um, thinner copy paper. I have before. But I, you just have to handle it more carefully when you pick it up like I'm doing here and move it around because it does tear, you know, because it's wet. So, but you can do it. 
And you can pour ink on, you can splat ink on, you can move your papers, drag your papers. You can put, um, like, you could put um, doilies down, you could put, you could try, you could try, like, uh, things you clip in your yard, like leaves and things. I, I haven't done that, but I, I bet that would come out. I bet there'd be some interesting textures if you tried that. So I think what I'm going to do next, not in this video, but next time I make a batch of colored papers, I think I'm going to use a flat cookie sheet and not use this one that has those lines. Although I did like the lines that came out um, on these papers that we saw in the beginning of the video. But um, yeah, I'm going to see what happens if I use a flat baking sheet. So here is the blue version. <clears throat> no, I'm sorry, that was the green. This is the green version. The blue is coming up next. And so still no salt with this one. No salt with the pink and no salt with the, the green. And basically the same process is happening here. Just painting up the papers with the solution. The doilies I have, hmm, I think I got them in the baking aisle of like Joanne Fabrics or store like that. And they're that, um, oh, is it Wilton brand? You know, that baking brand? And they don't take the ink all that great. They they take some some of them came out darker than others but some of them barely took the color so they must have like a plastic coating or whatever or something in the binding material in the paper but i also wanted to mention when if you do envelopes make sure you keep your flaps up um i usually kept mine open and against the metal so that it didn't it didn't adhere to itself like the glue portion of it um, so that it didn't glue itself down because I think it's highly possible for that to happen <laughs> um, anyhow it hasn't happened to me but I haven't like done that <laughs> so here it looks so dreamy and so pretty the way this green, this aqua green is going down. So I just set my paper right on top and I keep going. And when I want to do a lot of papers, like I said, I just keep layering and just keeping, keep making more solutions. And you can leave some of it white. You can make the whole thing colored in the end, you can take ink and dump, make another batch and just dump it right in the tray and let it soak for a while. And then I dump it out so that it can have a chance to dry. <laughs> um, but you could leave it like this, like leave some of the white. Um, it's all personal preference and what grabs your heart and what, what grabs your soul. What makes you happy? What makes your eyes light up? So now comes the blue and the coarse sea salt. And also I wanted to mention the brush and the brushes I was showing in the beginning. And the brush I'm using is just a really inexpensive sort of all-purpose nylon brush. I, it, you wouldn't want to use it for oils, but, and it's, it's just an inexpensive brush. Um, and that's really all you need but you can play around and you can try like a mop brush like I was showing you earlier you can use an inexpensive uh, coarse like a basting brush you could use uh, a really silky nylon brush that's really wide like a two inch to get it done really quickly so just play around and experiment and and see what you like for your tool so sometimes I drip it on and splat it on and just I try different techniques and, and do different things and that's really the way to learn. 
is to, uh, it's definitely helpful to watch videos, but it's, it's really awesome to just start doing it and not be afraid and see what happens. This blue color here is so beautiful. I also wanted to mention that you can mix these inks and create other colors. And if you know color theory or you have a color wheel, this is very helpful so that you get colors that you would like. But also just experiment and do it in a way where you're not using too much, like a tiny little squeeze out of the dropper out of, say, blue, with a tiny little squeeze out of the dropper, say, out of the red, and put them together in the same vessel and mix it up and see what you get. And I'm hoping you get sort of a deep violet purple color. <laughs> um, but yeah, try mixing your colors and create your own colors. But here I'm just using them the way they came right from the factory, right out of the bottle. But if you find these colors are too vivid or too garish, like I was saying, you can tone them down with water. But you could also tone them down with other colors. So here I just dump it on. I'm done. I don't have any more papers to dye, but I had a little bit of ink left, ink water solution that is. And so I just decide to dump it on and then pick up my papers, move them around, let them sort of run and drip. I play around and pour them on other papers and sort of mash them together. Well, not mash, but you know, press down gently to get deposit color on both papers. And the little bubbles that they create, they end up subsiding and not drying that way. They just uh, kind of dissipate. And now I'm doing the brown. And what I love about the brown is it really comes out in person more like, um, like a pinkish brown. And it's really a beautiful color. It's very, um, well, what I consider a bohemian color. But as I watch other junk journal channels, whenever I see someone doing a boho journal, it's, it's not what I think of as boho, but I think in this world, that is boho. <laughs> um, but bohemian, to me, um, they're like, dreamy pastel muted colors you know all the boho colors and the macrame and the feathers and that whole vibe um they're really muted and dreamy and pastel looking but anyhow this if you like those colors that type of boho this brown ink creates such a lovely sort of like pink cocoa brown color. It's really, really pretty. And it's not really caught on camera, wet or dry. Um, I wish it was here in the video for you. It looked brown earlier when we were showing it in the video, um, when the papers were dry and I was showing you. But it's actually um, more pink of a hue and it's quite lovely. So here I'm having fun, splashing it on, get it going. I put a lot of salt on the blue and the brown and set them aside to dry. You probably could get some really cool texture techniques too if you want to play around with that, with different things you could lay on to get impressions. And you can also just splat on ink like I'm doing here in the end. 
So thank you so much. I hope this helped out. I hope people find this helpful and and uh, it's a lot of fun to do. Give it a try. There's so many ways you can do it. You could have sprayed this too with a spray bottle. It's been fun doing this with you. Bye. Okay.